there, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today I'm going to walk you through a tutorial to create a very sweet, very soft and squadgy little round pillow. It is the simplest of projects to do and it should only take about 20 minutes for me to go through the whole tutorial and that's with some explanations and some added bits so for you to actually make it yourself it should be a breeze. So let's get on and see what we need. I've got my little platter here and you'll see why I have the platter in a moment but we'll need some needles, we'll need some stuffing. I'm using the um, hollow fill stuffing for toys or cushions. You need your fabric, a pen, a button and some scissors and I've got my giant platter because that's what I'm using to actually create the circle. Um, now, if you're not creating a circle using a, a round dish or a platter, which is in this case, this will fit quite nicely, uh, what you can use is um, a piece of string and a marker of some sort. So you would fold your fabric into quarters and then using a piece of string, you would measure out as wide as you want the radius of your circle to be and then with that string mark round on the quarter turn. Cut that through and that will then give you two circles of the same size. Um, I don't need to do that today because I have my enormous platter so I will simply make sure that my fabric is right sides together, have the smallest side on top so that I know that I'm not missing any, any fabric when I'm doing my drawing and then I simply outline the platter. I'm just using a regular pen uh, because this is on the inside of the fabric and it's going to be well within seam allowance. So regular pen is, is fine for this. Um, we're not doing high-end tailoring here, we are making a circular cushion. So now that's marked all the way around, I can cut that out. Get rid of the platter. And then long, slow strokes with the scissors are what's needed for a smooth circle. Just follow the line around. Try not to pull or stretch the fabric, otherwise it will become distorted. It's nice long strokes following the circle. Try to keep the fabric as flat to the table as possible. You don't want to be picking fabric up and cutting it, otherwise you'll end up with all sorts of jagged edges and also the possibility of cutting off your own fingers, which is, uh, is not pleasant. So this is nearly cut through. Last little piece. Wait that. Now as this is minky um, in America or plush in the UK, uh, it's going to be shedding quite a bit. So just be aware of that when you're working with it. Get out the sewing machine. Yeah. And now I'm simply going to use slightly wider than the width of my presser foot to do a straight stitch around the edge. And what I'm also going to do is um, do a back stitch to catch in the edges. Um, I'm going to be leaving a small gap about the distance of the tip of my thumb and that's where I'm going to both turn and also stuff. So I need to make sure that that's locked in by using some of those stitches. Now as you're going to be working on a bias, uh, this is cut in a circle so there will inevitably be bias, uh, do not pull, yank or twist because the, the fabric will become deformed and you will not have a circle. through and keep an eye on where you you started so that you can leave that gap. And then a bit of a 
stitch. And that is it for the sewing machine. It's a very, very, very simple make. Now we just need to make sure, removing the fluff, just need to make sure that all the edges on both sides have been captured by the stitching, which they have. And then I'm going to trim away the excess threads and snip around the edges, making very sure not to cut through the actual stitch line that I've just sewn. This is so that we get a, a rounder um, effect on the cushion. Right, the lumps and bumps. Again, a very quick process, as long as you're paying attention not to go through that stitch line. If you cut through the stitch line, you'll have to start over. And also do not snip through where you're going to actually be stuffing and turning. So now that that's been snipped all the way around, we can turn it. That's easier to take from the far end and pull through um, than it is to start close and tuck through from the hole. Uh, it gives you more to work with and it feels much less daunting a task if you can get that furthest edge through to start off with. Uh, there we have that turned. And as you can see we have something that is approaching a circular shape which is always nice to note rather than some sort of deformed jellyfish. So now we get on with the stuffing. So we need to grab our stuffing and pop that in through here. Um, and this is why we needed such a strong stitch uh, when we were sewing before with the reverse stitch to make sure that when we stuff it, we're not actually going to rip it open again. Just move my button away so that's, that's safe. Now it will take a surprising amount of stuffing. Um, I find people that aren't used to stuffing um, toys or, or cushions are always amazed at how much stuffing is actually required, how much filling is required. But it's down to you how firm of a cushion you're after. The, uh, the key thing is that we need enough that it looks smooth but we can also get that, that central um, dent indentation to give it a bit, of, a bit of shape and a bit of form rather than it just lay in there. There we go. There's different ways of stuffing and I think each person will find their own routine and rhythm. Sometimes it works better with four fingers, sometimes it works better with thumbs. It's just a personal preference I think as to what you find works. You want to try and ease the stuffing. Lots of beating up of cushions, pulling the stuffing apart while it's inside the cushion to help give it a more even look. And you just decide, I'm not going to go for too much more because this is a, a plush um, fabric to begin with. It's got some body. I think if it was a cotton, I'd go for a much firmer, firmer stuffing um, than I have here. Um, Maybe one, one bit more. And then we'll sew the closure using a ladder stitch, which hopefully you'll be able to see, but if not, I'll put up a still shot of what it would look like if you can't actually see this. So, take a needle, some thread, and if you're tying knots um, for fabric such as this minky or plush, you will actually need to tie two or three knots for it to actually catch on the inside. And then personally what I do is also a holding stitch. So I put the needle in through the reverse so that the, uh, the knot is caught 
on the inside. Now this is very close to where the original stitch was, or the last stitch for the uh, for the machine stitching. I then sew one, two holding stitches, and then I move on to the ladder stitch itself. So we tuck the edges in, make sure it's still vaguely circular, and then you stitch across and up the length of the gap. You bring the thread over the hole and you stitch up the side of the gap again. And then you stitch back across and up the side. So you are creating a ladder. Now I don't think this is gonna show up at all on camera. So what I'll do is um, I'll put a, a graphic up of what a ladder stitch looks like. But you are stitching across the gap, up the side, and then back across the gap in the other direction, up the side, so that you are creating a, a ladder effect of stitches that go across the gap, up the side, across the gap, up the side, across the gap, up the side, across the gap. Um, and then this closes really quite beautifully on any fabric. It's, it's invisible on minky fabric, and it's pretty close to invisible on any fabric that you, you care to mention um, or care to work with. And then once we've got to the end of that hole, I simply tie a knot twice. So you have a loop. You pop the needle through the loop, pull tight, and now I lose the needle in the body of the, um, body of the cushion. Pull that tight, snip it off, and then the tension pulls it back out. So that's a nice round cushion. And what we need to do now is pop the button into the center. So what I'm gonna make sure that I have now, because I don't want a, um, a knot showing on the outside of my fabric. So I will take the two ends and thread those through the eye of the needle, which gives me a loop on the other end and I will pop that loop in the center of the fabric and then thread the needle through that loop so it knots it without leaving a big ugly knot. Then I pop that through to the other side, which allows me to, to pull in and give some tension. And I'm going to sew the button on this side. And I will sew through the body of the cushion uh, two or three times and then knot it off around the outside of the button. So I'll, I'll just run through that process and show you how I've done that. Try and keep your stitches as close as possible to the original entrance. And then you decide how tight you want that, that button to be. Now I like them to be quite, quite tight. Um, and then put the needle through the eye of the button. Again, checking the tension. Back through. One last time. Can't do it left handed. And then back out. And this time, rather than going all the way through the body of the cushion, what I'm going to do is actually, let's see if I can do this so you can see it on camera, is thread through, through the button, but not go through the fabric because I'm going to tie it off around the outside of the button. So we're going to create a loop under the button, pop the needle through and pull tight, and then do the same again. Put the thread underneath the button so that it's wrapping around the threads that we've already sewn. Pull that tight, and then underneath the button, trim that thread away. And there you have your cushion. Your very circular, very fun, very easy and fast cushion. Hopefully that's been of interest, hopefully it's been useful, and I'd love to see some cushions that you create. You can create them teeny tiny sizes, you can create them massive sizes using the string and um, radius method that I described at the very beginning. And um, if this has been useful to you, if you've learned anything, please give it a thumbs up. If um, this is your first time to, uh, to this channel, hi there, welcome. Um, it would be great if you subscribe, but if not, have a look around at some of the other videos, see if there's anything that catches your fancy. Um, and feel free to share anything that I uh, that I make. The um, 
The release schedule is one video every Tuesday and one video every Thursday. To subscribe is the easiest way to have those, uh, those updates because it just drops into your feed. But uh, either way, I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.